I just got asked to do a kind of one-man show. So I just decided I'd try and do it in a stand-up style. I don't even know if it's stand-up. All that material has come from 30 years of making a dick of myself in one way or another. I've run out of people to blame because I've shot myself in the foot so many times in life. You know, other people have always struggled to get what I've had offered to me on a plate from heaven by accident. When you're from a very working class background like mine, you know, and you're working in an industry like the media, which is very public school and very kind of pushy and ambitious and, you know, people really going for it, you know, it's all daggers and poisons. They must have thought I must be the most ruthless, horrible git to have gone from where I've gone to being where I was. And so we, it just rubbed up because when, when the truth was I hadn't, I'd just been a lazy lucky git really, you know, out of work at the right time. It was only allowed to be a fad for a year and so even when other bands started coming through, you know, like when Oasis came through in 94, they were trying to deny that Oasis were part of what was really the continuation of that Manchester scene. So they said, oh no, uh, it's Britpop now and it's all about Camden Town. Yeah. It's all about London and you think, yeah, but which London bands are actually involved in it? What, Pulp from Sheffield, you know? And the weird thing about a lot of those Manchester bands, you know, even the Stone Roses, I mean, they've been knocking around. I mean, I've got a copy of their first demo, which was August 1984. And they didn't get their first write-up in the NME until sort of June, I think, 89. It was about the time when they were playing the Empress Ballroom in Blackpool. So even when the album went straight in the album charts at number 32, other than get a review, yeah. which was a bit lukewarm, they weren't getting any big write-ups in the NME. She was a pain in the arse in there, God bless her. Hey, no offence, Ulrika, but you know what, you, you were whinging all the time. So yeah, it was a very odd one, but often you know you don't see how these things are edited and portrayed. Because yeah, I, I, I watched some of it back when I came out and it was almost as if there was like this, it was the guys versus the girls and like Coolio was sexually harassing everyone. That just wasn't going on. That was a, that was a subplot that nobody, yeah. that just came out of the imagination yeah. of somebody in that house. Yeah. Would you go on any other reality TV shows? Uh, so what I'm asking really is, would you eat a kangaroo's bollock? Uh, that's it, that's easy. Yeah, for the right amount of money, of course. Right. You, you can't have any ego in this. Uh, that, that's, that's the irony of the media. Everyone thinks, oh, it's, you know, for everyone who's got a big ego. You, you, you have to annihilate your ego in the media. You have to have no ego, really. Wonderful. Because, you, you know, your job involves you being a dick every day. Never mind eating one. <laughs>